Greetings, Spencer here. I'd like to talk about trust today, the power of trust. If you would, turn with me to Proverbs 3 and 5. Proverbs 3 and 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. It seems like every conversation we've had for the last few months, maybe the last year, it always ends up when we talk about our relationship with God, talking about how we interact with him. It's not about form, it's not about fashion, it's about relationship and how we interact with God. And I started thinking about that a few weeks ago and what are the parts of relationship. And I realized that the key element to a good relationship with God is trust. There has to be trust. So let's talk about trust today and let's talk about what God has to say about trust in our life and in what he has to offer when it comes to trust. So what's a good Bible meaning of trust? Let's go to the NIV version of Psalms 143 and 8. Let the morning bring me word of your unfailing love, for I have put my trust in you. Show me the way I should go, for to you I entrust my life. Trust with God is entrusting your life. Every single part of you, not holding anything back, that's what God is asking you to do. If God asks us to do that, trust is always a two-way street. And let's, uh, let's see what God is going to give us in exchange for entrusting our life to him. RSV version of Deuteronomy 7 and 9. Know therefore that the Lord your God is God, the faithful God who keeps his covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. God keeps his promises, God is faithful, and he has steadfast love. He also, in Jeremiah 29 and 11, NIV version, for I know the plan I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Plans to give you hope and a future. So what's our part in this? Well, we already said it's entrust our whole life. Our whole life. God wants us to entrust everything, not hold anything back. Come to that place that says, God, not my will, not my will, thy will be done. Trust isn't something, when we read that scripture and, and trust the Lord with all thine heart, it's just not something we pray one prayer and say, God, can you put that in my life? Trust, lasting trust, is something that is developed over time, both through good times and bad times. Psalms 139 and 8. If I ascend up in the heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. God's always there everywhere we go. That's the trust thing. God is with us. What was that hell there? It was a pit. It was without God. It was punishment. It was exile. But we read the writer in Psalm says, but thou art there. We may think that we're without God. We may think that this punishment is, is exile away from God, but God is there. God is in hell with us. Let's talk about a couple of individuals in the Bible, very interesting men, very interesting stories about what transpired in their life. Let's start with Job. Job was going through a very horrendous, horrendous trial. He, it was not even his doing. Job 13 and 15 says, Though he slay me, yet will I trust him, but I will maintain my ways before him. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Job had lost everything. We're talking everything that he owned. He lost his children, which he prayed for and fasted for. His friends accused him of some, 
you know, not having a relationship with God, doing something wrong falsely. He lost his friends because of it. His wife tells him to curse God and die. He loses his health. He was living for God, but yet he found himself in hell. He was living for God, but he found himself in hell. He was sitting on a pile of ashes with a broken pot, scraping the boils on his body. He made, his bed was made, his place was made. The place he was living was hell. But Job was steadfast, steadfast in his trust of God. He said, I will maintain my own ways before him. The current situation was not going to change Job's trust in God. It was not going to change it. Then we have Jonah. The other end of the spectrum, Jonah was running from God. Jonah was avoiding the will of God. Jonah two and two. And he said, Jonah, I cried by reason of my affliction unto the Lord, and he heard me. Out of the belly of hell I cried, and thou hearest my voice. Jonah did not trust God, and he ended up in the belly of hell. And yet, when he cried out from the belly of hell, what did God do? God heard his cry. God delivered him out of hell. And when he came out of that place, he trusted God and did what God told him to, to do. What happens when you make that decision to trust God? What happens in your life? What transpires in your life? Let's look at Abraham. Abraham was struggling with trusting God. He was doing things his own way and it just wasn't working out. The, the outcomes were not what he expected and they were affecting not only him, but those around him. And then one day God says, Abraham, I want you to sacrifice your son. God commanded him to kill his son as a sacrifice. Abraham did not understand. He did not agree, yet he obeyed and trusted God. So here's Abraham, Genesis 22 and 10. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son, but God stops him. The angel of the Lord says, no, Abraham, stop. And Abraham looks up and over in the thicket, there's a lamb to offer, or a ram to offer for that sacrifice. God allowed the power of, tr of trust to transform Abraham. And Abraham that day realized, if I do what God says to do, even when I don't agree or I don't understand, God will and has a plan for me to develop trust and a relationship with him. The power of trust will strengthen and restore your relationship with God. Again, in Jeremiah 29 and 11, for I know the plans I have for you, that's God speaking, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope in a future. We find ourselves sometimes in hell, in a place, in a situation that we don't understand. But God's plan, just like with Job, Jonah, in Abraham is to bring us out of that. Sometimes our actions create that hell, like Jonah. Sometimes just living life like Job puts the circumstance out of our control. But when we make up our mind like Job did and said, I'm not gonna change, I'm gonna trust God. Let's go to Psalms 139.14. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and my soul knoweth right well. When you allow the power of trust to work in your life, 
and you know and understand the keeping power of God, you'll know right well that I'm wonderfully and marvelously made. Go today. I challenge you, go today. Sometime, get alone. Go in the, into the bathroom, go someplace, grab a mirror, go someplace where you can be away from everyone. Look in that mirror. And when you look in that mirror, you will see God's marvelous work. What God has fearfully and wonderfully made when you look in that mirror. Job 33 and four, the spirit of God hath made me and the breath of the Almighty hath given me life. God loves you, and God has a plan for your future, a future of eternal relationship with him. And it starts with trust. Trust the Lord. Allow God to develop trust in your life. Day by day, moment by moment, trust him more and more because your future is a future of God spending eternity. God wants to spend eternity with you. Thank you and God bless you.